business. We have one item of deferred business. That is moved by Councillor Morales, seconded by Councillor McCann, that Section G of the General Committee Report dated June 6, 2016, now circulated, be adopted. It's with regards to the Southbury Secondary School, 225 Prince William Way, site plan approval, second submission. This was tabled two weeks ago. Uh, Councillor Morales, you're putting the item on the floor, so I can look to you to speak first if you wish. Thank you, Mary Lehman. Um, just to clarify on moving the item myself, uh, that is a procedural thing. Um, that is not how I intend to vote on the item as printed. We've been dealing with this for a year, year and a half. I'm honestly exhausted on this issue. You would think on development issues, there is the intention of compromise, the intention of moving forward. There has been none of that. It's upsetting. It's depressing, actually. There's going to be students in September who don't know where their future is. They don't know whether they're going to be in a crammed portable, what school they're going to, or whether their parents are going to separate them from their friends. I had an email from a resident over the weekend uh, who lives in Ward 9, and she said she's been a longtime resi uh, resident of the former Painswick area, has lived in Barrie decades. And she says, and she doesn't mince words and says, at the complete lack of understanding and effort of cooperation on behalf of the school board, she asked me to support uh, the site plan. Uh, not because the site plan is acceptable. If anything, again, she had a lot more words to say, um, but for the students. And I made an effort to respond to her and said, we have to treat this just like any development application from any development, especially because the, these are the annex lands. People keep alluding to the fact that Barry doesn't grow correctly or that planning isn't, uh, has had not been up to par in the future. And I think all members of council around the table at one point and said, have said is, we're gonna make sure we grow responsibly. A lot of language has been used about uh, growing properly in the annex land, having walkable areas, having uh, grid line networking, and having frontage that encourages people to um, not be in their cars and to, be, to get to know the, the neighbors. I think the policies that our planning department has tried to negotiate with the school board um, are in, li in line with that. And I think one of the first decisions that we make in the annex lands, so the first test to see if the plans we passed through much consultation are actually going to be how we move forward. And we, we make an exemption to these. It's, it doesn't respect the planning. And my, my big guiding um, principle has always been there's going to be Barry residents in 50, 70, 100 years who look at how our city's laid out and they're going to either say that era of council and staff and stakeholders, they learn from their past mistakes, they had it together and that is why this area has smart growth. Or they're going to look back at a decision and it may very well be this decision and say, what were they thinking? I personally, when I ran for council, there was two things I ran on investing in infrastructure, and promoting smart growth. I've got an application at OMB, so trust me, I'm not afraid of the OMB. First one, too. And for myself, this application does not do that justice. Planning is something we have to live with long term. You don't just rip up 50, $100 million buildings and in infrastructure um, because it was done poorly. So it's, it's, it's a tough situation. We shouldn't be here if... <laughs> You know, we've all made an effort, but again, like I started with this, I've said, I've said my piece, I've communicated to my residents, I've stood firm, and I think everybody knows where I stand. I'm exhausted with this. Councillor Prince. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I do have an amendment that I'm going to put on the floor. It's uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Kahn. And sorry, before I go through this, I have circulated the copies of the amendment to members of council as well, so you should have all received this um, at the beginning of this meeting. Once again, it's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Kahn that motion 16-DG-148 <coughs> of Section G of General Committee Report dated June 6, 2016 concerning the South Berry Secondary School 225 Prince William Way, site plan approval, second submission in Ward 10 be amended by adding the following. Number one, the following words at the end of the sentence, including a condition 
that the school board commit to the development of land shown as potential phase two development parcel, either through the construction of building, or, sorry, either through the construction of a building on the site by the board or a community partner, or by surplusing and selling the lands for the construction of a building by a private entity. Such commitment to be in the form satisfactory to the C CAO and director of planning. And number two, a new paragraph two as follows, that the owner applicant be exempt from the requirements of section 5.7 of site alteration bylaw 2014-100 in order to secure a site alteration permit prior to the commitments, commen commencement, excuse me, of any works within the subject lands in accordance with bylaw 2014-100. And I will be brief in my comments. Um, am I okay to proceed? I think you've circulated the item, so I'm not sure members council need me to read this again. Does anybody need me to read this again? Okay, seeing none, Councilor Prince, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I actually introduced this motion, this, sorry, this amendment, I guess it was a month now? Has it been a month? Has it been that long? Yeah, three weeks to a month. Um, so I, I, I don't want to repeat what I said uh, at that time when I introduced it. Um, essentially, you know, this has been a tough one. I, I don't think any member of council has found this, this easy. Um, it's not black and white, although some members of council have seen it that way. I have not said anything negative about the school board during this process, and I will continue down that path. The issue that I have with it is, at the end of the day, I do believe direction has to be given, and we do have to make some form of decision. And I'm, I'm trying to find a compromise for the last 18 months that this, is, this has been going on. Um, at the end of the day, I think we can all agree one thing that's going to happen is it is the students and ratepayers that are going to suffer, and I don't believe that they should suffer from the sins of the school board. Um, I'd like to see this school get built. I think, again, this is a fair compromise to get it. I have put a lot of stock in the ward councillor's comments and the work that Councillor McCann has done. He has really opened my eyes to what his res residents want. And again, that holds a lot of stock. I mean, we should have our finger on the pulse in terms of what's going on in our ward and what our residents do want. Um, I've been back and forth in this issue, and like I said, I think this is a fair compromise that gets C City Council's position on this out there, and that gets a school built in Ward 10. And uh, I have nothing further to add. Thanks, Councillor Prince. Councillor Ward. Um, thanks for having me. I guess maybe I'll just ask Councillor Prince, just explain what this, I mean, you talked in general terms, what is your, your amendment, what does it change from what we have on us, okay. on the table before? <clears throat> Essentially what it does is, is there's been a lot of talk and conversation about having the building up close um, on the roadway there. And the school board has taken a position in terms of they, I don't want to speak for the school board, but from what we've received that the, the school is not going to be moved and not going to be placed uh, up against the roadway in terms of the planning policies that we have sent out. Um, so what I'm asking them to do is my compromise is allow them to go forward. Um, and if they're not going to build, if they're not going to develop along the roadway, then what they are to do is have that land basically sold. I mean, turn a profit on it, have somebody develop it that's actually going to get it done. Okay, and I guess how would that be done? How would we, how would we get from, how would we force them to sell that land or develop it? Sell the land. So just to jump in, uh, this amendment, of course, uh, is roughly what was on the floor three weeks ago. Actually, I think it's exactly. Uh, the, it's a condition of site plan, to answer your question, Council Ward. It would be a condition of site plan approval uh, that the commitment be in a form satisfactory to the CAO and Director of Planning. So, yeah, we'd put a condition um, in the site and, plan approval. And just paragraph two, I mean, that looks like something added by staff for some reason. Maybe just explain what that is. Yeah, that was added by staff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to um, our great city clerk. Um, well, what that does is that this actually allows the school board uh, to start putting shovels in the ground right away. Um, maybe I can just speak generally to it. Um, I'll, I'll support the amendment. I mean, we've, we've already compromised many times on this, and every time we've compromised, it's uh, rejected, unfortunately. But I just want to say why I'm 
I'm so adamant that a building be put on that corner, and it's not because I'm bitter because they're closing Barry Central, although I do think that was short-sighted to close Barry Central before they either had an addition onto North. Oh. Okay, but that's the thought. I mean, I'm, I wish they had kept the school, but at least they got the addition onto North. They'd be closing it. They were a year away from even getting the addition onto Barry North. Um, forget about three or four years from seeing a school on that site. Um, so I really wish they kept it. But that's not why I'm voting against it. It's not because I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get back to the school board. It's not because I'm being stubborn and, and don't want to be seen to be backing down. It's all about planning, which we've stressed many times. Um, you know, the fact that a building should be built on that, on that street on the corner isn't something that, you know, we're, we just threw it into our, our planning documents. It's mentioned 11 times in the Hewitt's planning um, secondary plan. I just wanted to read out some of, the, some of them. It says, all development shall be designed to be compact and have a pedestrian and transit oriented built form. Um, Building densities and land uses shall be designed at densities which are transit supported. Okay, not so much the densities, but um, compact and have a pedestrian and oriented built form. This doesn't achieve that. Buildings on corner lots on Ontario and collectors should be sited and massed towards the intersection. Nope, doesn't meet that either. Um, the city shall work with the Barrie Police Service to promote safety and security and accessibility to all development and public areas based on the principles of crime prevention through environmental design. This doesn't do that. It's not a safe location they're putting the school in. All public facilities, including city and school facilities, shall be designed to contribute to the achievement of the policies of the Hewitt Secondary Plan. Doesn't do that. The policy makes it quite clear the building's supposed to be close to the road. Big Bay Point, or um, not Big Bay Point Road. What's the road I'm trying to think of? Maple View, Maple View, thank you. Uh, development shall be planned to be pedestrian, bicycle, and transit family from the out family transit friendly from the outset with a pattern of streets and blocks which encourage pedestrian circulation. It doesn't do that. Um, promote a vital and safe street light and support the early provision of transit. Doesn't do that. They're not putting it on the transit route. Buildings should be located on or close to the street line and mass at intersections to establish a strong street edge. It doesn't do that. This comfort, this uh, amendment may do that, but right now they're leaving a big gap on that on Maple View Drive where the school should have gone, or at least the buildings should go. The size and configuration of each school site should be consistent with the policies and requirements of the respective school board while recognizing the need to make the efficient, the most efficient and effective use of land possible in conformity with provincial and city policy. That's been ignored. A key consideration in the design of both the recreation, community park, and the secondary school designations and the surrounding street and pathway system shall be ensuring efficient and effective use of land and encouraging residents to walk or cycle or use transit to access the facilities. Once again, it's being ignored by the school board. Um, to minimize impacts on adjacent residential development, the recreation center, community parks, and secondary schools will be encouraged to be located wherever possible adjacent to non-residential uses. Once again, they're ignored, they're actually putting it next to the residential uses and not next to the non-residential uses. School sites shall be generally be developed in accordance with respective policies, practices, and guidelines of the school boards, taking into account provincial and municipal planning policies. Um, once again, they're not taking into account provincial policies. Um, and I guess the, the sad part is, as far as I understand, all of council agrees there should be a building close to Maple View Avenue. Um, and from I understand from the meeting that was held between the trust, Barry trustees and the ward councillor and the mayor and some staff in uh, both the city thing, the, the trustees all believe there should be a building at the corner. The school, the school board staff and city staff all agree. Everybody agrees that apparently, as far as I can figure out, the only ones who don't think that a building should be put on that corner are the trustees from Clearview and Midland and Oro Medante and places like that, Aurelia. We are actually accommodating them, so we're abandoning our planning principles at their request. It's not the people in Barrie, it's not the trustees in Barrie, as far as I understand, it's not the school board staff. We're abandoning our policies for somebody that doesn't even live in the city of Barrie. Um, I do think we have to take into consideration that, the, you know, we are trying to build a better community, both for ourselves and the students that are going to that school. And a, and a better policy is to put a building on that corner. So I'll support the amendment, and I hope it passes. I'm not sure what the school board's reaction will be, but I think it's worth a try to give them one more nudge to follow Barry's um, planning policies. Thank you. On the amendment, Councillor McKinn. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. <clears throat> so, Councillor Prince, just to deciphering your amendment, it's clear that this does bind the school board to make change, right? Yes, it does. So unfortunately, I will not be able to support this amendment. We made it very clear last time when Mayor Levin brought the amendment forth that any way of using Councillor Shetley's words, muddying the waters, it muddies the waters clearly. And therefore, they have to go back and they have to 
go to a vote takes more time, more delays, and more delays. The school board is going to walk. So I'm going to say no to this amendment, and hopefully I have your vote. I've prepared a speech that clearly defines why I'm voting yes tonight, and hopefully that you'll change your mind and vote yes. Thank you. Any other comments on the amendment? Councilor Press. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. I'm just, uh, I'll be brief. I'm not going to support the amendment. I'm sure it's uh, well intended. I'll probably speak to the main, uh, I probably won't speak to the main motion, so I'll make my comments here. Um, I understood the principle around 165,000 square foot school up against the road. I understood that. That made sense to me. When that stopped being the planning principle and we started talking about a 20 or 25,000 square foot building instead, with the 165,000 square foot building still up against the residential council ward, still violating all of those great planning principles, and I, I tend to agree with you. To me, the 25,000 square foot building is not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough to say to our residents and to, our, and to future students, they can't have a school in good time. It's simply not enough for me. So I can't support this, this, mo this amendment here tonight. And I will continue on the uh, the track that I've been very clear about the last couple weeks. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, I'm going to urge members of council to support the amendment. That won't come as a surprise to you since I essentially introduced or helped introduce something similar three weeks ago. Um, last, last time this was introduced, I spoke to the meeting that was held and um, the attempts to reach an agreement as a compromise. And I actually respect Councillor Prowse's point. He's right. It is a compromise. Um, However, I think what Councillor Prince is doing is extremely commendable under the circumstances. And the circumstances are these. Um, we have a, a process that's gone on far too long uh, for a building that is badly needed in the city. Um, and yet, here we stand with our uh, planning principles in the annex lands facing their first test. And as Councillor Ward has literally read out on the floor tonight, there's no question around those policies. It's not an issue of whether they're being interpreted correctly. They're crystal clear. And I believe that the, they've been crystal clear from the very beginning. And this council, 11 to nothing, uh, supported staff's rejection of the site plan uh, you know, over a year ago for that reason. Those policies are crystal clear and those policies are really important. So I'm not gonna speak right now about uh, why I think they're so important. We'll see what happens with the amendment. But I really want to encourage members of council who feel that uh, the board needs to be held to our planning policies to actually support this amendment. And here's why. It is a compromise to end this. There is no possible reason um, that uh, this development cannot be done uh, uh, up at the street that fulfills planning policies. Um, the uh, uh, phase two development lands, which were agreed to, and to the credit of the school board, they sent us a map identifying the lands. What was lacking is the commitment. And without the commitment, we really don't have anything other than a line on a map. So Councillor Prince, I think, has very rightly introduced a, an amendment that requires a condition of site plan approval uh, to fulfill that. And the opportunity then exists uh, for us to move forward with something that, while it does not perfectly reflect our policies, would I like the school up at the road? Absolutely. Is this a compromise that can end the issue and get a school built? I continue to believe it is. So I'll call the question on the amendment. Sorry, Councillor Severa? No, I'm sorry to speak up to you, but in regard to the amendment, and you say that we have to move forward, I don't see how we're supporting this amendment we're going to move forward because we're going to come to the square one once again and and what i see this is a detriment for the process and also for the kids that are waiting for school uh, personally i'm not going to support it because i don't see any way to move forward with this uh, amendment so um, i'm not going to support it okay thanks for your remarks councillor Sarah. quick question Councilor Morales. A quick procedural question. Some members of council and myself have this. Uh, can there be a recorded vote on amendment to, to the motion? Yep, we're at city council, absolutely. Recorded vote. Okay, recorded vote's been requested. Madam Clerk, I'll conduct the vote, or please conduct the vote. Starting with Councilor Prince. Yes. Councilor Kahn. Yes. Councilor Morales. Yes. Councilor McCann. No. Mayor Lehman. Yes. Councilor Ainsworth. No. 
Councillor Romita. No. Councillor Shipley. No. Councillor Ward. Yes. Councillor Silvera. No. Councillor Prowse. No. And it's lost. Okay, thank you. On the main motion. Yeah, thought you might. Councillor Kahn. Thank you kindly, Mayor Lehman. I'm going to beg your indulgence. It's been a while. I know. Me too. You get five minutes of our indulgence under the procedural bylaw, Councillor Khan, and then our indulgence will rapidly expire. I assure you this will not be 100 words, and I assure you it'll be in five minutes, though. Mayor Lehman, uh, members of Council, uh, words that have been used to describe the exchange and full reveal of this file with regard to the attitude and approach by the administration and the school board include deceit, deception, similar, failure, arrogance, disregard for the standards that the balance of the city is held to, disregard for the students, misleading, and so forth. Members of council, I'm appalled, I'm disgusted, and I'm truly disheartened that we find ourselves at this point. Let me be clear, and I think this is important, I hold absolutely no contempt for the very elected trustees who are in this room this evening. Time and again, the school board administration as a body has misled council and their residents of the city of Barrie with regard to their true intention, both with regard to the intent to close Central from day one, many years ago and certainly before I was on council, regardless of the options and feedback that were presented to them, as well as their request to rezone the Central site recently. A school there was never in the cards. Similarly misleading were their grand statements with regard to why they truly wanted to build the school in the wrong spot. Grading costs is a bogus rationale. Everyone knows it. Anyone knows, who knows anything about land servicing and development knows that grading is a part of the process. It's that simple. Their true intent was revealed, Mayor Lehman, and it was no surprise that they would eventually want to sever and sell the most profitable quadrant of the site for commercial purposes. I don't expect a genuine answer, but one can only wonder why the school board was not simply honest and forth forthcoming from the get-go. I would have quite honestly supported that business case if it had just been up front. Mary Lehman and members of council, I can tell you this, residents are frustrated and rightly so. Their children are the hostages in the ponds of this disgraceful dis debacle. Our students and families are already set to bear the burden of the school board's arrogance and poor planning by shipping students to already overcrowded schools. Many will spend their entire high school tenure in a portable, possibly 40 of them at Innisdale. Many will never have a fair and equal access to extracurricular activities, music, sports, etc. Certainly there won't be enough uniforms to go around or instruments. They will most certainly have a diminished quality of life and education. Our good teachers will face a similar demise. They too are heartbroken. So what's left? Further arrogance filled with factual inc inaccuracies, threats to simply pick up and leave the sandbox. The very institution that is supposed to be the hallmark of character development and good citizenship as they educate our students, well, they are the bully in the playground. And I find that reprehensible and shameful. Members of council, we know our role in the community, and I have zero intention of lecturing you. That's not my place. Each of us has quite a difficult task at this moment. Our job is to ensure that the best practices and planning principles are not just given lip service, as we saw at the initial presentation. And thank you, Councillor Ward. You illustrated a lengthy list of lip service that we were given, of how they thought they wanted to convince us that they were meeting our guidelines. But rather, they should be respected and fully embraced. Our role is not to plan schools and even quite honestly look out for the students. That's not our job, but rather to plan our city and our neighborhoods. However, our residents are now looking at us to protect them where the school board and administration has not. I truly hope that we as a council and staff will learn from this experience and compile a list of takeaways to ensure that we safeguard the well-being of our residents and ensure that we don't allow for a double standard. 
and to ensure that we don't allow for a very troubling precedent for future applicants to point to. Members of Council, I'm vehemently opposed to this board's application. I truly am. And if I'm speaking in full disclosure, I personally am now suspect of anything that they present. I can only say that I have faith that our residents will remember this, and I have faith that our residents will express their discontent as appropriate when the time comes. That said, members of council, we are in this unfavorable position, and I believe that the ward councillor, Councillor McCann, has made a very compelling argument. The students are the only victims here. It's not a planning argument, Councillor McCann. It simply is not, and that bothers me greatly. It's a, it's a horrible argument, actually, because it's not a planning one. Yet, those students include students who attend Innisdale in the ward that I represent, and just some of the students who are guaranteed to suffer from the school board's decisions. And I have a far greater challenge with that. So, in a turn, something that goes against everything that I stood for and fought for and argued for for the past however long. And I know you shake your head probably in dismay, some of you, but I will support this application going forward. This, this school needs to be built. But I will remember this too. I think that's what they call a twist. Uh, other comments on the motion? Uh, Councilor McCann. No, I saw you first. Go ahead, Councilor McCann. Okay, Councilor Silvera. Uh, thank you, Mayor um, I don't have a comment. I think I said all, all right what I have to say through the newspaper and for the last few months. Although I have a question for uh, for the planning department to Mr. Naylor probably because we are what we're doing here is to say if is this proposal is accepted in the process or not what I see is the need for a school but uh, Mr. Naylor in the process of uh, as we move forward let's say that we're not going to approve this school what 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 the effect is going to be for our community, especially if you want to build a complete community in South End without a school? Can you tell me how it's going to work? Through your worship, um, to Councillor Severa, as I understood the question, um, you're asking if the school doesn't get built, how does that affect the community? We have planned not only in the annex lands but within the uh, built boundary for schools to occur in the built boundary mostly have um, so there are schools that will um, or have been built and will continue to be built um, so the the loss of a school or for, I, I guess I should back up we, we don't know what um, the reaction will be should the uh, council um, make the decision not to um, not to proceed as, as you have asked um, it we've heard that it is unlikely that the school won't be built but it could and it could be built in um, in other locations um, but I'm I believe that there will be continue to be schools be built throughout the annex area because there is a need um, so um, I don't think that it will be a detriment, a long-term detriment to the, uh, um, the fulfillment of the secondary plans. Um, it will occur, it just may be delayed. I mean, with this uh, answer, I, I have to disagree some of it. I think it's going to be a treatment for, for our community. Because uh, what we say all the time here, we want to build a complete community. And I don't see a complete community without a school. I really don't see how this can happen. Um, I'm not going to support this. I think we need the school there. Uh, I need the parents need school. I don't want to see our uh, kids being busing all over the city because of uh, of the same person city council. So uh, I'll support uh, Councilor McCain. I think he's right. And I think this is not about us. It's not about the school board, but it's about the kids, the parents. Thanks, Councilor Severa. Councilor McCann. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Lehman and Councilor Prowse for that pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> So I got to tell you, uh, Councillor Khan, I'm, uh, you had me going there, 
and uh, I felt like I was uh, in the last game against the Warriors and the Cavaliers a few weeks ago, and uh, nice twist to that. So, like Mayor Lehman mentioned, you know, I definitely respect everyone's comments with this, and I've been in the deep end with the trustees and the school board and city staff for, for about a year and a half now. Four weeks ago, we gave the students exactly what they needed. That's a school being built in the southeast end of Barrie. This elementary school will be feeding into Algonquin Ridge, Hewitt's Creek, Hyde Park. Thousands upon thousands of students are going to benefit from the decision that we made four weeks ago, and especially the decision we're going to make today. Tens of thousands of family members are going to benefit from the decision that we make tonight. Council, let's not take, let's not take this away from the students tonight. I'd like to briefly go over and reinforce the reason why I'm voting yes tonight and why I'm encouraging you to vote yes tonight. OMB, it's not a wise choice. I, I do find it interesting that the comment from residents is that we are nervous or afraid to go to the OMB, and I believe that Councillor Prowse said it perfectly. No, we're not. It's just you have to put all the pieces together and understand that the outcome, whether it's in favour or not in favour, I believe is going to be detrimental to my community, to our community in War 10. If we lose at the OMB, then we're going to be in exact, exactly the same position that we are right now, except we've wasted, best case scenario, nine months, worst case scenario, two years. If we win at the OMB, this could actually even be worse than losing at the OMB, because the school board can just pick up and leave. They are not binded, and they have been very vocal and very motivated to let everyone who wants to listen that they will never build this school on the north area, of the, the north part of the lands. Also, our residents being double taxed. The tax base is going to pay for the city and for the and for the uh, the school board to go to the OMB. This isn't being fiscally responsible at all. I'd like to talk about precedence. I mean that's popped up a little less than I thought. And I'd like to read, uh, maybe challenge uh, Councilor Barry Ward a little bit. In the City of Barry's official plan, pardon me? Thank you. Section 6522, corner location should emphasize the building, not the car. As the dominant feature in the site, setbacks in these corner locations should accommodate space for landscaping, pedestrian amenities, and interesting architectural features. These sports fields clearly are not emphasizing the car. Urban design, the urban, gui urban design guidelines are important, but what's more important is having a school built. This is also another public sector body. This isn't a private builder. So the guidelines are important, but it's time for the school board and the city to work together because this is what's needed. So what are we really debating tonight? We're debating a 25,000 square foot building that I've heard from people around the room is just a glorified Mike's Milk. That it doesn't do what the city is asking to do, which is promote walking, biking, and creating social hubs. Does a 135,000 square foot school do that? I'm not a planner, but sounds like it could. Does a building that's 25,000 square feet, that is just a overgrown Mike's Mart, promote biking, walking, and is gonna create this social hub? Once again, I'm not a planner, but I don't think so. What really made me jump off the boat was when I was in a meeting that Mayor Lehman brought up with planning, Mayor Lehman, Carla Clad, myself, John Dance, trustees, and their team. It's when we all agreed on the last quarter of the, of the two hour meeting, and we all agreed that yes, we're gonna build a school in the South End, and yes, we're gonna have a 25,000 square foot building that can be built in 15, 20, or 30 years. This is when I went, how important can this building really be if we're going to 
not put the school's feet to the fire and have that, have that building built right away. It can't be that important. This building has no owner, this building has no tenants, and this building has no purpose. So what does the new site plan that the school board has delivered to us have? Sorry, it's Councilor McCann, you do get five minutes at council and you're at it, so I'll ask you to wrap up your remarks just to give everybody the same chance. One minute. So what does this new site plan have from the school board? It's got outdoor educational hubs. It will attract people. It will attract walking, running, and biking. It backs onto three acres of green land, two sports fields. Where people will be playing sports, people can put a towel out, have a picnic on the weekend. This will be a fun corner. This is not about grading or safety issues. This is not about the mayor. This is not about any one me uh, member of council around the room. This is not about Central Collegiate. This is not about the school board. This is about having students in Ward 10 being bused to a school that's already overpopulated with 19 portables and having to do 19 more portables. This is about the tens of thousands of residents, students in Ward 10 that are gonna benefit from this school being built. In closing, just because this is the path of least resistance doesn't make it the wrong decision. Council, I am asking each and every one of you for your continued support. Tonight, let's not, let's not take this away from the students. Thank you, Marilyn, for letting me go over the five minutes. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Councilor Morales. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, Councilor McCann, I ask this to you completely neutrally. This is a non-leading question. It might seem that way. Which I actually don't know the answer to this. Uh, when you yourself uh, met with Jeff and the school board representatives, um, did you support uh, the exact or variation of the amendment that Councilor Prince tabled? You're asking me that when I was in the room with everybody, did I support the 25,000 square foot building that was going to be built, whether it was going to be built in 10, 20, or 30 years? Yes. So in that room, yes, I did support that. On reflection, I had to really examine what my motives were, and that's when I changed my decision and really did a 180, because I don't believe that that building is that important if city staff and, and, and the rest of us are going to let them build it in, two, in three decades. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I look into the audience right now and I'm focusing on the one person who probably thinks I'm not focusing on her and that's uh, former Mayor Leaking. Thank you so much for sitting with us this whole time. Um, I know you've attended a couple of meetings and there was an issue a few weeks, almost a few months now ago that had to do with the past. How do we preserve the past? How does this new council, who doesn't have as much history in the city um, as you even come to value that? And while I think a couple of us, myself included, have come around to preserving the past, this vote is definitely about preserving the future. It is disgusting that we are compromising and we are selling out on our planning principles. I see Mayor Lakin nodding along. <laughs> Members of council, take a minute to look at what just happened. Mayor Lakin, somebody who has definitely earned the respect she has is nodding along to the comment that we right now are compromising on our planning principles. I am not one to question Mayor Laking. Maybe I never will be. I am taking that direction that we need to make sure we do for what she and others have done for the past that we do for the future. It is extremely disappointing and as Councillor Ward said that whether it's out of stubbornness or they actually believe it is principal ideology and it is correct, that there's a couple of trustees that are not even from Barry that are holding this decision in limbo. We are compromising City of Barry planning principles for people who either by ideology believe that or just have it in for Barry. That's not leadership. <laughs> if this vote fails tonight and the school gets built, I'm happy for the students that are finally not gonna be in limbo. But even then, I don't hold much trust on how that whole process and operations are gonna be carried out. One thing I am very clear about is when I campaigned in the southeast corner, and I haven't really owned this issue because it is in War 10 to give respect to Councillor McCann, the boundaries are boundaries, 
but this just as much as affects and almost all, if, if, if not a good portion of, of Ward 9 residents uh, who go to the public school board will be um, going to the school. The number one issue was congestion and poor infrastructure. Our roads cannot handle the congest congestion there is. Why is this city so designed so backwardsly? I have pushed for smart growth in this area. I have not denied, and I will, and future councillors in this area and present councillors in this area will have to live with that decision. We're going to get the phone calls. We're going to be held accountable, and every single person in that southeast corner and all families in Barry Innisfil who have students going to this area will be held accountable. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on the motion? Okay, I'm going to make a couple comments. Um, I don't think it's a surprise where I stand on this issue. Um, you know, I was tempted tonight to bring with me a lot of the emails, the messages that I've received over the past couple of weeks, because, you know, there were a lot of great points made. Some of the names would have been familiar to you. You all received the same emails. Many of those names were not familiar to us. That's the degree to which people who don't have necessarily a horse in this race uh, or, or do uh, have engaged with this issue. What was particularly striking to me was hearing from people from other parts of the county, uh, from Wasega Beach, from Aurelia, uh, uh, among others. And, you know, I think if nothing else, the high profile that this issue has had uh, has raised significantly the awareness of the kind of issues that, that have occurred uh, with four OMB appeals by the Simcoe District School Board of City of Barrie planning policies and planning approvals in three years. Um, I didn't bring those emails because you've all read them. I'm not going to quote our residents back at you. Uh, there's a couple of things I did want to say, though, uh, at this point tonight. I, I get that members of council feel they're in the very, very difficult position, especially you, Councillor McCann, of being in a potential lose-lose scenario. That's what's been presented or at least suggested to you that the school will never be built in Barrie and that uh, the, the school will be moved to Innisfil. And I think uh, former trustee Smith made it clear that that requires the approval of the Ministry of Education. It's not just because uh, trustees, whether from Barrie or from the rest of the board, decide so. Um, so let's just be clear about the, the actual potential for that. Um, to be very, very clear about what we're voting on, we are not voting about a 25,000 square foot building at the corner. That amendment we just voted on, it failed. So that's off the table. What's in front of you right now is very simple. It's the same site plan you turned down 15 months ago. It's got some new landscaping. I will give it that. Um, there was, an, uh, frankly, in its feedback I gave the school board, there was an attempt made to improve the, the um, Prince William Way frontage. Uh, with some better public spaces, some better pedestrian movement. That was done, and it significantly, I think, actually improved from a landscaping point of view. But if the issue is, Councillor McCann, if the issue is, Councillor Prowse, if the issue is, for all of you, all 11 of us voted the same way, if the issue is the school should be at the north end of the site, that's the question that's in front of you. If you want to change your view on that and permit the school at the south end of the site with no substantive changes to the site plan at all, then vote in favor of the motion you've got tonight. If instead you feel, as you did several months ago or 15 months ago and at different times in this process, that our planning policies are important, then you need to turn this down. So our planning policies are crystal clear, as we've discussed earlier tonight, and um, I think I've made some comments, and members of council, you've heard them before, so I'm not going to give you another speech about why it's important to follow our planning policies, except to remind you of this. If this were any other developer, would we be having this conversation? Not for a moment. And not because we would be less inclined uh, to support a, a new hospital or a new post-secondary institution or a major new industrial employer who wanted site plan changes, not because those things aren't important, but because they wouldn't bring us here. They would have addressed our site plan policies because as experienced developers, they would have come in, gone through a process, and there would have been a compromise by now. The reality is uh, we are being put, you and particularly Councillor McCann, you're being put in a very, very difficult position. And I understand why some of you want to say, I'm going to put the kids first and we're going to get the school built. I get that. We need the school. The city needs the school. 
But there are fundamental decisions where you either defend your planning policies and you expect everybody to follow them, especially when it's the very first development in the annex lands, or you don't. And while I understand the pressure, I have to tell you that there's a reason that people, when you poll them about Barry and their satisfaction with Barry for years, have usually said, number one thing change, uh, please change, fix the roads, please fix the roads. Number two, please change the way you plan for growth. This council's made enormous strides. The previous council made enormous strides in changing the way we grow. That's not, not always easy. We saw that with our residents tonight on 401 Essa Road, and we, we will see it again. But fundamentally, those policies are about building a much stronger community, and they are important. They're about not repeating the mistakes of the past that have led us to situations like Maple View Drive and the congestion that we've seen. They're about building orderly development, and they are important. So I would urge you to turn down this item and support the policies that have been laid out quite openly for years. Council should hold its head high about how we have conducted ourselves through this process, and that's the last comment I want to make before I call the question. Every single one of our meetings was in the public eye. We never went in camera on this item. We always, always let the public see and hear why we were doing what we were doing, how we were doing what we were doing, and ultimately who voted for what. And that you should hold your head high about regardless of the result. Because I think our public, uh, while they themselves are divided on, on this issue, will at least recognize that uh, this council has made every effort to present publicly and keep them in the loop. Madam Clerk, could you conduct a recorded vote on the motion? Any thanks. Councilor Ward? Sorry. Um, and it's partly because of something I said earlier tonight. I want to make sure that I just I re-reading re an email you sent out after that proposal agreement was reached. I just want to make clear it was actually only one trustee was in the room. I thought all three were, but it was actually only Jen Cameron. So I just want to make sure that was clear. And uh, Peter Beacock was in the room, along with uh, John Dance and I think Kathy Wallace and somebody else. And, and just one clarification, were they all asked at that meeting? And that, quite clear, that the plan at that point was to surplus the property on the corner and put up a thirty to 45,000 square foot building. Was everybody in that meeting polled and in favor of that compromise. Yes, the consultant went around the room and asked everybody whether they agreed with it. They went around the room. This was to make clear. It was only the board chair and one of the very trustees were at the meeting. They were in favor of Correct. that compromise. And to be fair, to be very fair here, it was always, did you agree that this is a proposal that you can take back to your body for approval? So in my case, take back here to the, in the trustees case, to take back to the board of trustees. Okay. Calling the question, to be clear on the question, since we just had that discussion, it is not about the building on the corner. The question is whether or not you are approving the second site plan submission, which is laid out in the report. It's the one that shows uh, the, uh, uh, the line that says potential future uh, development and improves the landscaping along Prince William Way and the school is at the south end of the site. To be clear, that's what you're voting on. If you vote yes, you're voting to approve that site plan. If you vote no, you're voting to turn it down. Okay? Madam, Madam Clerk, please conduct the vote. Starting with Councillor Kahn. <laughs> Yeah, I'll ask members of the gallery not to influence the vote or speak during the conducting of the vote, please. Yes. Councillor Morales. No. Councillor McCann. Yes. Mayor Lehman. No. Councillor Ainsworth. Yes. Councillor Ramita. No. Councillor Shipley. Yes. Councillor Ward. No. Councillor Silvera. Wait. Councillor Prowse. Yes. Councillor Prince. No. The motion carries. Okay. Thank you, members of council. Uh, I think I'm going to call a recess as we've been at it for two hours and 40 minutes. Uh, I'm sorry to those of you making a presentation, but we're going to take 10 minutes and we will be back for the direct motions, presentation, inquiries and announcements. 10 minute recess.